Hey friends, welcome back or welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Ashwat Singh. And on this channel, we demystify life and technology. And in this video, I'll be showcasing my Capacities workflow. In case you don't know what Capacities is, check out my video up here or it'll be in a link in the description below. So let's get right to it. But first, what is there in my workflow? Okay, so my Capacities workflow involves four main things, which is my YouTube channel, IB, books, and any other entertainment media that I'm consuming, like podcasts, videos, etc. So the first thing, which is YouTube. So on YouTube, I basically have an object called YouTube, which is defined in my capacities workflow. And then inside of that, I have collections, which is ideas, then scripted, cogs turning, actually cogs turning, then scripted, then recorded, and then uploaded. So basically, that's sort of like a five-step cycle that I follow on my YouTube channel. I've been trying to do that more when I was bringing a notion, now I brought it over to capacities as well. Then my second thing is taking notes for IB. So as you know, I use Active Recall quite a bit to revise. So basically I create an object called IB and within that I have pages for computer science, physics, maths, economics, Spanish, English, as separate collections inside of it. Then after that, I have my third type, which is books. So the reason I've incorporated this now is because I have basically read a post from Ali Abdal where he talked about how he wished he'd taken notes on books when he was younger. So I thought maybe now that I'm a bit more free, I can try this practice as well. So I've added this as another object where I have three sub collections inside of it or three collections actually. So one is the sub that I finished. These are books that like I remember reading a bit. So I've taken a few notes on them, but I may come back to them later. Then the second is recommended. This recommended could be from other people or it could also be books that other people have referred to, such as in the Three Alarms, he's referred to quite a few books in that book itself. So I put those as recommended books to read afterwards. And then after that, I have currently reading books. So that means books I'm currently reading at this particular time. Like for me right now, it's On the Shortness of Life by Seneca and the Three Alarms. And then the fourth object is basically my videos or podcasts, etc. that I'm consuming. So I like to consume a lot of productivity content and I See that sometimes I forget what was talked about in those videos. So I thought now I'll incorporate that into my entire workflow. So if I'm watching a productivity video, I'll try to get into the practice of putting that link into capacities and taking notes on the video as it goes on. So that I can use it later on for ideas for new YouTube videos or more. So those are the four main things in my workflow. Now let's get to showing you how they work in my workflow and how they're incorporated. So let's go back there and let me show you how it works. Okay, so this is my capacities workflow. So my workflow, it all starts with a daily note. So I've been trying out a new concept called intercitial journaling, which basically means journaling by taking account of time as well, which means you basically put a time and then you write down whatever you've been doing. It's a new concept that I found recently and I wanted to try it out. And as you can see, I've been trying it out for about a week almost. So I'm going to be making a video on that also soon about my experience with it. So if you want to know about that, be sure to be subscribed to the channel. So basically what I do is I do slash time. So capacity has these like small little commands that you can use with a slash key, which is really useful when you're trying to do some particular work. Like that slash time is your timestamp now, which is really useful. And you can do anything here. Like, like I could write something like this and you know, subscribe. Doesn't hurt to ask. Yeah. So basically that is what happens in my daily note. It's mostly me just journaling and talking about what I've been doing that particular day based on the time. And after that, where mostly everything happens is the live dashboard. So basically this is just like a page where I have all of my main pages just stored in here, sort of like a map of contents. So basically in this, I have a cover image of an hourglass. See, I'm not, not sure why I did that, but it looks pretty nice. And then I have a small little quote over here by Seneca, we are mortal in our desires, but mortal in our fears, just to motivate me a bit. Then after that, I have my personal, media, tasks, and then IB. So on personal, I have YouTube channel, goals, quotes. So basically, this is where most of my personal stuff happens. So like, for example, if I click into YouTube channel, you can see that it'll go to my YouTube page where everything is there. Then after that, I have quotes, which is basically most quotes that I've taken from here and there. And mostly this is all just quotes from two books because I've just started the idea of note taking on books. So yeah, so it'll eventually be full of a lot more notes, which will be quite cool. Then after that, I have media and entertainment, which basically consists of articles, videos, podcasts, etc. that I've stored into capacities. And I'll be making videos about how I deal with links and capacities as well. So if you want to know more about that workflow, 
be sure to click the subscribe button so you're notified of that upload whenever it comes out. So basically, like if I go into podcast, that's two Huberman Lab podcasts, which I'm finding really interesting. So I started this idea of taking notes, so I just have all these at quick access whenever I require them. Like this, if you see all the web links, there's a lot of stuff. Then after that, I have a sort of semi-task management system, which basically involves these small embeds of all of my tags. So the way you get this is you basically do, you, you first do the tag and then you click small card. You know why card also, but I found small card is better when you're trying to stack them below each other and next to an image. So basically the idea is that I have all of this here and then eventually all of them will go into the done folder. I have been a bit lax with checking this, like I usually do check it quite frequently, but that's because of IB, IB exam that I wasn't able to check it that frequently. Then after that is the IB one. So over there I have all of my notes on IB so I can easily access everything. So now let's first go to the first object, which is my YouTube. So in the first object, I always have the objects mostly on the dashboard because over there it's much easier to access everything and makes it easier to get to stuff as well. So over here, I'm, I basically have everything that I've not directly tagged yet. And basically it's mostly all of your recent content that you haven't written anything in. So I just keep adding ideas here and then eventually I'll go into one of the uh, five, six containers, sorry, that are there. So I find this idea really nice of this inbox because it sort of allows you to get through everything that you've done much faster and it shows you all of your recently edited ideas. So like I click go to ideas, you can see everything that is in here and it's all in a wall view because I like the wall view, it looks really cool. And that's basically how my workflow for YouTube works. It's just me adding ideas and eventually sort of siphoning them into particular boxes. Then after that is books. So books is once again on of my sort of dashboard view once again. So over here are all my collection which is recommended finished reading. And then all my last edited books. So basically in reading, I have books that I'm currently reading. Like for me, it's on the shortness of life and the three alarms. These are two books that I'm reading currently. So basically in here, I'll be taking notes about books. Like for example, I'll just show you an example notes such as I've been taking notes on this. So I have all of the notes in here just like that. And then over here, all of these books that you refer to objects is basically pages that I have added into this book, which is recommended. So basically I have just added them here so I can access them later. So in case I'm finding a new book to read, I can just see the recommended and pick up a book from there. Then after that is my, oh yes. And also now when I'm taking notes, I usually have at the top, what is this book about? So essentially once I finish reading the book, then I'll write about what the book is. And before I start reading, I'll write a bit about what I think the book will help me learn. And after that, I have quotes that resonate with me. So I just keep adding a few quotes here and there that I find really interesting and sort of really deep. Then after that, I have books that you refer to. And then I have all the notes, like in this case, that's parts of the book. So I've made like parts of large header and chapters like that. Then after that is my IV one, which is like basically the main, main thing. So over here, I have all of my objects up here, which are my six objects. So like if I go to computer science, it loads into this table view where I basically put only date, last device, title, and icon as the main stuff. I'm sort of close to other stuff because that's not really required for me. And basically the idea is whenever I revise something, I'll put it into that particular date. And the thing that's really cool about this is these dates will always show up on the side of that particular day in a daily note. Like let's say if I do this one and today is 18th May. So I do 18th May over here and I go to calendar. Then you can see that it comes over here, which is really useful because then you can track back from the daily note itself to what all you have done. And I found it a really cool feature and something that I'll probably be using quite a bit when using active recall because it allows tracking back much faster if you're just writing a daily note and you've already referred to it somewhere. And also all these references always come in over here so you can see everything over here just like that. So basically all my notes have an active recall structure, as I said, so I'll be going more in, into depth in my active recall thing, because right now I'm just talking about my workflow. So in case you want to learn more about my active recall system, be sure to be subscribed to our channel so you can be notified when that video comes out. Then after that is my um, web links, which is the last part of my workflow. So over here, I basically have all of my links that I've taken from different places. Just some are articles, some are videos and all this kind of stuff. So basically over here is that where it's all sort of cluttered together and then eventually it'll all go into all of these. 
so basically like i have over here like videos so it has all of my videos over there which i'm watching and i've taken notes on podcast articles like that and most of the articles i do often load them into a capacity as well because i more or less highlight on them instead so yeah okay so that's my workflow and capacities in case you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comment section down below i'll be more than happy to respond to your questions and also i'm be making a lot more capacities content and a lot more other content like this so in case you want to be notified of more content like this be sure to subscribe to my channel so you're notified of all of my new uploads so once again thank you for watching this video all to the end and i'll see you in the next one bye bye